percentage of regenerative braking is off your accelerator and off your brake. Each of the controllers varies a little bit in their design and all of these options, but it's kind of like configuring the software program on your laptop. Well, that's what you're doing, but you're configuring the software program in here for your car. Once you have it wired up the way you want it and you're running, you get to revisit this a lot. You'll take it out and drive it, see how it feels, and decide, hey, I want a little bit more regen, a little bit less regen. I want a little faster acceleration. No, I want a little delay when I step on the pedal, um, and so on and so forth. So that's why they have these variables that you can tune somewhat endlessly and a car that's 100 pounds heavier or six inches longer is going to feel different from the other ones. So they're, they're taking a fairly specific device and trying to generalize it to a, a, appeal to the maximum number of people they can. This is a pretty good one. For example, they have an uh, uh, input pin for your brake signal light, which we found in our DME connector and a uh, input pin for your accelerator, which we also found on our DME um, connector. And we're gonna hook those up uh, to those pins here. Um, uh, I found it very interesting to learn that this particular controller will let you set the amount of regen separately on the brake and accelerator. Not only can you have it work off of both, but you can have it work at different amounts off of both. And so we can set the accelerator, for example, to develop 30% of the available power we could get from regen and have the brakes um, set at 70%, for example. Um, and by having both signals, when you let your foot off the accelerator, you get one level of regenerative braking. And when you put your foot on the brake, you get a much higher level of regenerative braking. That sounds like a good strategy. It's kind of like having two potentiometers on the dash, but we can do it in software. Um, we also do have inputs for our uh, regen pot that we put on the dash. But I also found an input on here that is um, for, uh, let me see if I can find what pin that was, the Regen Enable, pin 10. I can put a switch and switch 12 volts to pin 10 and, uh, and that'll enable regenerative braking. Of course, if I set the switch in the other position, we don't have regenerative braking. Why might that be important? Come to find out, reading through the blogs of the mini owners, a lot of them have gotten into winter and they get on slippery uh, roads and uh, the BMW guys have done something very cunning. They've taken some signal from their ABS system and used that to disable regen when you're on icy or treacherous roads. That's a pretty good idea. I wish I knew what signal that was and where it was and we're going to be looking for it. But meanwhile, we're going to put a, a, since it is winter here, we're going to put a little toggle switch on the dash where I can disable the regen. I hadn't thought about this, but if you're on glare ice, you probably don't want braking uh, to apply itself when you uh, try to slow down. So I want to be able to turn off that regenerative braking completely um, and have that at my fingertips at any time. So that's a pretty good idea. So that's kind of a target of opportunity. We can go through some of the pins that we're going to connect. I'll have this diagram up on the screen. Uh, on the top left of the diagram, you have pin 3911. That's CAN bus, high and low. Um, the vehicle has CAN buses. Uh, we're not using them a lot at this point um, and won't be for some time. I'm not going to connect pin 39 pin 11. Uh, we're not going to put this on a CAN bus. If we did, it would probably be like if I had a CAN bus display and wanted to actually display values out of this, you could do it that way. Um, coming down that side, we've got uh, pins 24, 38, and 23. That's pretty simple. That's our RS-232 connection. You get you know, a little RS-232 female which I've got uh, wedged down in here already. And um, you really only need three pins of this. 
pins two, three, and five. Pin two is your um, transmit pin. We're going to hook that up to pin 38. Um, pin uh, um, uh, well, let's take a look here. Transmit goes to pin three, receive goes to pin two, and uh, ground goes to pin five uh, on this. And that corresponds to pins 24, 38, and 23 here. And that's where we're gonna hook up our laptop serial port to program the device. The next down on the left side is uh, traction ready, pin three. Um, and what that is, is uh, I've actually got it here, I think on this white wire. Yeah, that's your uh, your Tim Ready light. That means everything's operating okay, but that's a switch ground, and you'll see these a lot. So you put 12 volts and then an external white emitting diode, and you hook the cathode side of the uh, LED to this. This is the ground. Now, if the Tim isn't ready, you don't have a ground there, and so the light's off. When, it, every, when it's got the signals it needs and is in a condition that's good, um, then it'll switch a ground to that LED, and that allows the 12 volts through it just a few hundred milliamps um, to light that LED. They have another one, pin 17, speed below P50. P50 is just a variable. You can set that in the software. As the speed's below that, it'll light another LED. Um, what would you need that for? Well, frankly, I don't. Uh, but it, it's uh, uh, like if you're parking or something. Um, pin 25 is a reverse light. Um, we're not going to connect it. And the reason is we're not going to reverse the motor. Uh, we're going to use the reverse gear in the uh, transmission, and it already has a reverse light. The uh, power steering Renault, we're probably not going to use that. Tack out signal, pin four, uh, I have brought out. We, we're not too sure what we're going to hook it up to or how we're going to get it to work. Um, we're still working on that, but I went ahead and wired it up. Uh, we would love to have a tachometer signal out of this uh, motor to the point where if I can't get it working with the BMW tack, we'll probably get a little electric tack, one of those little two-inch ones, and uh, hang it in the car somewhere. Um, the next two pins are parking, enable, and disable. Um, we're not going to need those. That uh, This motor uh, in the smaller sizes comes with a little gearbox and it has a parking pole. These are five amp outputs. They might be useful for something, um, but uh, um, we don't have a parking pole and so we're not able to use them. Pin 32, the next down is cooling fan enable. Again, a switch ground. We've got a cooling fan on our radiator and we're gonna use that. What we'll do is set up a relay, 12 volts on one side of the coil the negative side of the coil, we'll hook up to um, this pin 32 and we'll put 12 volts on, on one of the contacts of the relay and the fan, um, 12 volts, and I've got the connector right here, we've still got, we'll wire into that and, uh, and that's how we'll turn on our uh, fan on our radiator. The uh, next is pin 36, brake light out. You know, I haven't really worked this out yet, but it would be nice to trigger our uh, brake light when we're doing regenerative braking. Um, unfortunately, part of the time I'm using the brake light um, signal in to trigger our regenerative braking. I don't want to hook up the output to the input and, um, and, and cause every time we uh, do a little regen to have a brake light out hook back to the brake light in um, and I do like the idea of having regen separate, separately adjustable on both the brake and the accelerator. So I'm not going to hook up this brake light out right now. We'll think about that. The um, next three pins, 26, 12, and 40, are labeled REC on here. That is your recharge level or your re regen level. Um, and that's showing a 5K pot. We put a very nice one, like a 10 turn, fairly expensive 5K pot on the dash and run wires to these pins. Pin 26 is a, 
a five volt output from the uh, controller that goes to the pot. The return, which goes to the other end of the pot, is 